It's possible to predict the outcome of a marriage, whether or not it's going to divorce, with great accuracy. And I'm not just saying that because I've got a really good eye for this. I just have this unique ability to spot things. There's actually been a fair amount of research done on this by some really good researchers. One of those is Dr. Gottman, and Dr. Gottman has been researching this for decades, and there's a marriage lab involved. There's all kinds of observation of couples, and longitudinal data has been collected to determine whether or not the presence of certain characteristics predicted who was going to get a divorce and who didn't, or other characteristics predicted whether somebody was going to get a divorce or they weren't. And across time, it's really been narrowed down to certain traits and characteristics that predict whether you're going to get a divorce or not. And I'm going to tell you what they are right now, and then we're going to talk about what to do about them. This has been derived from seven different studies that Dr. Gottman has done, and these studies included all different kinds of couples, those that were divorced, those that remained together that were happy, and those that remained together that were miserable. And from these studies, Dr. Gottman found that couples that eventually get divorced tend to have conversations about conflicts with one or more of the following features. So I want you to think about these, write them down. They're going to be on the website, but you need to ask yourself, do I have one or more of these following features in my communication pattern with my significant other? And if you do, then I can tell you that you're likely to get a divorce, and I can tell you that with 94% accuracy. Now think about what I just said. If you do one or more of the six things I'm getting ready to tell you, Research says there's a better than 9 out of 10 chance you're going to wind up getting a divorce. And that means one of two things. You either just ought to go ahead and get it now and save yourself the trouble, or you better change what you're doing. So what's number one? Number one is couples that tend to wind up getting a divorce manage conflicts with what is called a harsh setup. Now, what we're talking about here is there is an obvious sign from the get-go, from word one, that this conflict is not going to go well because it starts with sarcasm and other negative forms of communication. That can be criticism or other expressions of contempt. And when I say sarcasm, it can be mocking the other person, mocking the way they talk, mocking what they say. It can be, you're just like your father. Oh, you're just like your mother. How does anybody ever respond to that? I mean, you're attacking their parent. So if it begins with a very harsh setup where there's sarcasm, mocking, criticism, character assassination, where whatever the issue or topic was, that has been pushed to the side. This has gotten personal, and there is an attack on the individual's character, worth, and value. People that do that in arguments wind up divorced 94% of the time. Number two are the four horsemen. And these are four forms of negativity that have been shown to be so devastating to a marriage that Dr. Gottman referred to these as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And these are criticism contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. And by the way, they actually occur in that order. It starts out with criticism and then contempt for the other person, which draws defensiveness from the other person, and then they wind up just stonewalling. It's just like the garage door comes down, and now you're just talking to a wall. Conversation dries up. I got nothing to say to you. They shut down mentally, emotionally, physically, and typically withdraw from the situation. So the four horsemen are criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling in that order. So think about your conflict patterns, because it's not just that this happens once. If this has happened once in your relationship, or it happens once a year, or occasionally, 
That doesn't mean you're going to get a divorce. But if these things occur in pattern, this is the pattern with which you communicate and deal with conflict. That's when you can predict that they're going to lead to divorce. So ask yourself, what's your pattern of communication with your significant other? Do you go at it constructively? Do you problem solve together? What is your objective when you have a conflict or a disagreement? You see, some people have a disagreement, they have an argument over we're going to do A or B, and their objective when they enter the conflict is to win. And you're probably thinking, well, of course my objective is to win. Why why else would I be in this argument? Well, let's just unpack that for a minute. Let's say you get into an argument with your significant other, and let's assume that this person is your significant other because you value them, you love them, you care about them, you nurture them. You wish them well. But then you get into an argument and you want to win. Well, let's extend that out. If you're going to be a winner, what does that mean they're going to be? If there's a winner, there has to be what? A loser. Do you like to lose? So do you think they like to lose? How do you feel when you lose? You feel down, depressed, broken, resentful? I mean, I think about winning and losing because I grew up in athletics, and I remember walking down the hallway in high school, and we were going to play the Titans. The signs on the wall would be, crush the Titans, you know, devastate the Titans, annihilate the Titans. So the idea was, you just wanted to stomp them into a mud hole. You wanted them to get on that bus with their heads hanging down, their tails between their legs, saying, man, they crushed us. We don't ever want to come back here again. They dominated us. Well, that's because it was a competition. And if when you have a disagreement with your partner, it becomes a competition, then there's going to be a winner and a loser. So, I mean, what are the banners in your head? Devastate Debbie. Dominate Debbie. Trounce Debbie. I mean, is, is that really what you want to do? I mean, is this a win-lose situation? And then let me appeal to your greed. What kind of company is a loser? You win the argument. You dominate, devastate, trounce Debbie. Now you have the rest of the evening stretched out ahead of you. What kind of companion is she going to be? Is she going to be a lot of fun for the rest of the evening? Is she going to be real happy to be around you? I mean, you just stomped her into a mud hole. I mean, is she going to be like, oh, hey, let me sit in your lap. I I so trust you with my feelings and emotions. Of course not. She's not going to want to be around you. And when she is, she's going to be defensive and shut down. She's going to stonewall you. The four horsemen. You say, well, then what is an argument if you're not going to try to win? What if instead of your goal to win, You make it your goal to be heard, H-E-A-R-D, heard. I want you to hear my point of view. I want you to acknowledge my point of view, and then you do with it as you will. And I will hear your point of view, and then let me do with it as I will. So the conclusion of this disagreement is going to be that we have heard each other. Heard, H-E-A-R-D, not H-U-R-T. I know this is audio, so I want to be clear. The objective is that we have heard each other. So if your objective is that you hear your partner and that they hear you, then you retreat. And across time, I promise you're going to find that if you truly love one another, you're going to get out of the combat zone and you're going to try to find some middle ground where you can accommodate as much of what your partner wants as you possibly can, and your partner's going to accommodate as much of what you want as they possibly can. And that means both of you are moving towards the middle, and you're going to narrow the gap of difference a whole lot more than you think you can. And sometimes you'll do 75% of the compromise, and your partner will do 25. Maybe the next time your partner will do 75, and you'll do 25. But across time, you tend to find that middle ground where you find ways to coexist. You find ways to live together, whether it's differences about parenting, about spending money, about in-laws, religion, sex, whatever it is, you tend to find a way where you're sensitive to each other's position. 
but you give each other a face-saving way out of the conflict. You reflect on it. And you know later we're going to talk about how to fight fair, rules of fighting fair. But before we actually get down to tactics, we have to first talk about the strategic approaches to this. So you can see why the first two things that predict divorce are the harsh setup, sarcasm, criticism, contempt, and then the four horsemen, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. The third of six predictors is called flooding. And this is a term that describes the overwhelming and sudden nature a partner's negativity can take, particularly in the form of them just blasting you with both barrels with character assassination, all of this contempt and criticism that they bring. Defensiveness can have the same effect, but this is when everything just goes off the rails, and it's just all-out war at this point. There's no consideration for the feelings of the other person. It's just all-out war at this point. They get so negative that it's just, get them before they get me. I'm going to nail this person. And so the character assassination just takes over as the number one objective. Number four is body language. Look, when somebody is the target of flooding, when they come under attack, and again, the attack is personal, it's character assassination, it is really to devastate them, their heart rate is going to go up. I mean, it's going to go over 100 beats a minute. It's going to go as high as 165 beats a minute. Their blood pressure is going to shoot up. Adrenaline is going to spike. They're going to go into fight or flight mode. There's no problem solving now. There's no reasoning. They are in fight or flight. It's like, okay, put them up. We're going to have a verbal knockdown drag out here, or I'm getting away from you. I'm out. I'm gone. Fight or flight. It's one of our most basic reactions. And that's what happens when you are attacked in a character assassination kind of way. The fifth of six that predict divorce is failed repair attempts. Remember I said this was a pattern? When I say it's a pattern, I'm talking about this has to occur overnight. Even as powerfully negative as flooding and the four horsemen, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling are, they don't seal the fate of a marriage in one bad night. There has to be a pattern of this. And when there's a pattern, it has to be followed by failed repair attempts, where the person makes half-hearted attempts, insincere apologies, doesn't really come in and repair the damage that has been done. And failure to do so Failure to really come in and acknowledge what took place and how bad an idea that was is a reliable sign that divorce is in your future because the wounds never heal and you have these open wounds. It's like your psychological skin has been burned. And so now it doesn't take much to offend the other person. It's just like you can come up and pat them on the back and they're like, oh, man. They react because they're still hurting from the last time their character was attacked and assassinated. So failed repair attempts are a critical factor. And then number six, all you have to do is interview the two people in the relationship independently and find out if they have a backlog of bad memories. Do they have a backlog of bad memories? Because if what sticks out in their mind, what they have in their memory bank is one painful experience after another, it blocks out the good times. It's the big blow up and then the next big blow up and what happened at Christmas and how things went bad on one of their birthdays and what happened on over the 4th of July and just negative, 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 negative. If they have a backlog of bad memories, that is a strong predictor of divorce. Look, no couple is going to have a success-only journey through their marriage. It just doesn't happen. Everybody is going to have conflict. Everybody's going to have problems. It's never going to be success-only. But couples who have more good times than bad, couples who have fond memories, 
tend to have a happy marriage because they relish those good times. And you've heard me say a million times, the best predictor of future behavior is relevant past behavior. So if your history is positive, your memory, your history in your mind is positive, then you predict a positive future. But if what you have in your head is a negative historical perspective, then you're going to predict a negative future, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the six things that predict whether you're going to get a divorce or not all have to do with how you handle conflict. 